do. Mask is broken. <clears throat> oh, put the mask back on. Put the mask back on. Anyway, hey, this is Riot, and this is part of my top ten best of the worst Halloween movies. <clears throat> when you just saw a second ago, Jacko. <laughs> is uh, definitely one of the best of the worst, and <laughs> definitely one of the worst. <clears throat> um, how to put this? So, there's a guy called Fred Olin Ray. Uh, if you're a B-movie fan, you know who he is. If not, um, he's basically like a Roger Corman. You probably know who Roger Corman is. He's a guy who made lots and lots and lots of movies, put a little bit of money here, a little bit of money there, made everything super on the cheap, and just launched them out. Imagine Roger Corman crossed with some sort of sleazy porn director. That's pretty much what Fred Olin Ray is. Uh, <clears throat> of course, therefore, I'm a big fan. He's just one of those guys who moved out to Hollywood at the right time, hit on the boom of the VHS era. Being in Hollywood, you could always find some kid with a camera who was sober enough to know how to use it, and enough film reel was available in that area, and always enough bodacious babes that would be willing to take their shirts off or at least get as close to it as possible for very little money because it was yet the boom of the fact where everybody could be a model. <clears throat> so probably why it's a little bit more tougher for him to do it now. Um, I believe his son's even in the game now too, doing some of those like big sci-fi network, well not exactly big, but I mean physically big, the monsters movies like Mega Sharks and stuff like that. Anyway, so uh, Jacko, the point of Jacko, it was exactly a marketing gag. It was on the, um, I always want to say Maury Povich, but it was a Phil Donahue. On Phil Donahue's show, he did a thing about Scream Queens because of the success of people like Lena Quigley, Brink Stevens, um, Melissa Bauer, that kind of era right there, <clears throat> which is mainly to blame from Fred and Ray. So, hence for this movie, um, he did a little advertising scheme to kind of like basically advertise himself, I guess. And did a competition that someone could win the role of a Scream Queen on a new movie that he's making. Which, I don't know if he had a movie on the go at that time. Because uh, I was reading an interview of the writer-director duo of this film. Where they had done a movie called Dark Universe with Joe Estevez for Fred at that time. <clears throat> and then they literally just slashed together Jacko in like the course of a weekend. Um, because they had the girl, the appearance on Phil Donahue. The Phil Donahue crew was going to come and film them while they made this movie, so they had to do it really quick. And, of course, uh, they had access to Lena Quigley, so they had one legit scream, 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 scream queen in there. And then they thought they would try to get a big release for a VHS of it, even that it was filmed in, like, fucking, like, four days, probably, if that. And... They came to Fred and he said, oh, I have two stars that are friends of mine that have used in films for a little walk-on bits before. Uh, Cameron Mitchell and the legendary uh, John Carradine. Except it was odd because John Carradine had died three years before that and Cameron Mitchell died three weeks before that. So they just superimposed them and cut them out of films that have done before. Especially with Cameron Mitchell being a uh, sort of horror host type broadcaster saying you won't believe the fears you see it's that kind of thing I don't know but a little bit like oh Ed Wood using that same kind of host and then putting a cloak over someone and then ever so often using different angles of the face of Bell Lugosi hmm. very Ed Wood um, it, it seems like it's Ed Wood and they didn't know it um, on top of that, in the interview I was reading from the director, they, uh, let's zoom down here. I cannot remember his name. What does the box say? It may even lie. First to it is, oh, Steve Letcha. I don't think that's a lie. I think that is actually the person. These kind of films are sort of famous for just making up names sometimes. Uh, anyway, they, st Steve, I guess, said in a like a letter he'd written all a while back that you're like, okay, well, we've got two known star names in here, so that's fine, even that it's weird and kind of morbid. But uh, then he was handed a book called The Splatter Films Volume 2, I believe, and it had a top ten saying, ten reasons why you know your indie horror film is a piece of shit. Number nine was it has John Carradine in it. Number two was it has Cameron Mitchell in it. Oh, yes. The doctor is in. <laughs> anyway, 
it's a pumpkin man. It's it's a motherfucking pumpkin man. You don't often get that. I always imagine this guy is what was going to one day kill Charlie Brown, who was the great pumpkin king. <clears throat> the pumpkin looks awesome. The acting is beyond terrible. Like, you know you always have that horror film where there's a kid that you hate? This kid is really, really easy to hate. And so much so, he plays two roles. A flashback of a relative of his past and himself, of course. Would you like to hear it? And, yeah, he seems like he's just stoned, the whole thing. It's like a six-year-old, eight-year-old kid just seems fried, which I think is just absolute fright in his face. His parents are ridiculous. They seem like, they kind of remind me of the Troll 2 parents, like, just not getting it, but actually parents, and just being parents, and therefore fit the role to an extent. Um, I won't give too much of the plot away for this, there's no real point, but it does have some hilarious fucking kills. Let's see one. See? How is that not hilarious? Um, and again, a pumpkin man. The hell out of The crazy old man that tells you about a pumpkin man going, he'll break your back with a snap, snap, snap. The pumpkin man will steal your soul, snap it up, and swallow it whole. It's like the creepy old man that says, you're going to camp blood now. Uh, it's a necessary thing in horror films, I guess. Anyway, the cover is amazing on the tape, so I, even as a kid I had to pick that up. But I had seen the Phil Donahue episode, and I never watched a talk show, but it was said, we're going to talk about horror scream queens. And I'm like, 11-year-old oh. me is like, I, I, I must see this. <clears throat> and sure enough, that girl ends up in the film. Uh, I remember her saying she got paid like 200 bucks and just ate Oreo cookies all day, because that's as good as a catering got. Um, <clears throat> but... Uh, I don't think she really did anything else again after that. But uh, she does get trampled through a swamp and gets her throat slit. There's lots of hilarious fake blood. Uh, really, even for a Fred and Ray film, this looks really homemade. And clusterfuck of a story. And, however, luckily, the idea of getting just a big fucking pumpkin, and putting it on a cloaked body, putting a Grim Reaper's scythe, sickle, whatever the fuck those things are called in his hand, awesome. And awesomely stupid, because, let's just say, it's, it's, the, the ending is so, I don't know. Hello, Oliver. Yeah, you don't like this movie either? Does this movie upset you? Do you like Jacko? What do you think about Jacko? No, you don't like Jacko? Well... You're gonna have to try it for yourself. Oliver doesn't recommend it. Oliver doesn't like Jacko at all. <laughs> but I do. But I'm sick, bent, bitter, and twisted, so. You must do as I command. We'll see you on number two. These are not in any specific order.
these are just 10 shitty movies that I enjoy, and they're all really shitty.